Hello, everybody. This is your caster, Patrick Mahoney, here with uh, Radiant AVGL Bank. Watertown, getting ready to start our tournament off today. Dire team uh, Bank. Emerson College and Berkeley College of Music. Um, got Emerson on Dire and Berkeley on Radiant. So far, we're going to see a troll ban from Emerson and a uh, silencer ban from Radiant. The troll ban, not too surprising. He's one of those heroes Ten in the meta right now where. Uh, He's a first pick, first band type Radiant hero. Um, band. We're also going to see an axe band. So, another one of those first pick, first band heroes. Uh, Emerson could be looking at some melee carries, perhaps. Uh, axe is a great counter to any of those. Um, Ten seconds remaining. And with a silencer band, we could be looking at some strong int mids. Maybe Five a storm spirit remaining. or a, a queen of pain. Um, or an invoker, something like that. We'll Reserve see. Time. Silencer is uh, definitely a game changer, uh, either support or carry position, and we're going to see a line ban, so right now it looks like uh, Berkeley is trying to get rid of some sniper. powerful supports, and we're going to see a sniper, first pick from the Dyer. Uh, this is not too surprising, sniper, one of the most played heroes in the meta right now, he's, um, you know, he's very powerful with the new headshot and the shrapnel as well, so... We could definitely look to see some long-range sniping action coming out from Emerson College. Um, yeah, to counter the sniper, it's an interesting first pick. Uh, you know, Vengeful Spirit, great against sniper. Swap him into the fray and uh, blast him down real quick. Anything to get close and cover ground to get get close to sniper is really clutch. So we're looking at a Phantom Assassin possibly. Uh, we're looking. Again, a vengeful spirit, maybe, you know, could see a spirit breaker, that'd be a lot of fun. Always a good time when you see spirit breakers out there. Right now, Berkeley College of Music on their second pick. Let's see what they're gonna go Five for. Seconds remaining. Reserve time. So some of the heroes that could be great against Sniper again, Storm Spirit. With that um, silencer ban and line ban, they're banning out a lot of lockdown right now, uh, and you know that's what we're really looking for in a storm spirit is the ability to jump around the map, hop up on that sniper, bring him down real quick, Phantom and we're gonna see a phantom assassin. Uh, as I was saying earlier, great counter to a sniper, works pretty well with vengeful spirit in lane. Um, that damage aura is gonna be really nice, and that minus armor as well. So I think that's a lane that we're gonna look to be scared for absolutely you know there's gonna be a stun coming out with the slow from Phantom Assassin that's a very very quick first blood uh, opportunity so let's Ten see how that goes remaining. Emerson College now uh, are gonna Five want to think about a Skyrath Mage uh, this is interesting another great support with that instant silence could be used to really lock down the Phantom Assassin until she gets a BKB at least, which is pretty much going to be a necessity with the um, sniper headshot as well Radiant as the Skywrath burst. So, however, that burst is going to be helpful. Uh, that silence for sure. They see that the silence has been banned, and they're trying to get some more silence on their team. So Dyer that makes sense. Ban. We're gonna see a a Bat Rider ban coming out of Dire. Uh, that's a good ban. I like that one. They're going to be sure to protect their sniper and make sure that he can't get jumped in on, you know, uh, a flaming lasso is a really quick way to bring down a sniper. And we're going to see a storm spirit ban. I like this a lot too. Another great counter to sniper. Um, you know, now sniper has a much better chance of doing well in mid. You know, we could still see something like a queen of pain or, uh, you know, a similar blink initiate hero, but... We're also going to see the Tide ban and the Clockwork ban coming out from the Radiant team. Uh, Tide, another great hero in the meta right now. And Clockwork is also pretty strong. You know, both some tanky heroes. So, so far we got Int bans, two Int bans, two Strength bans. Uh, so, you know, there's definitely some room for some strong intelligence heroes on the Radiant team, or the Dire team, that is. Tidehunter can turn a fight very quickly, so not surprised that that was picked quickly. I'm a, I am a little bit surprised that they picked Skyrath Mage second. I wouldn't put Skyrath as a second pick hero. Uh, not quite yet, but 
he could be useful, especially against this Phoenix, um, who is also definitely in the meta right now. Phoenix going to be very useful against that sniper. She's got the Icarus Dive, got the Ray of Healing and Damage, and uh, that Fire Burst. So unfortunately for her, she's going to be taken down pretty quickly by Sniper long range if she tries to go into uh, Supernova anytime soon. And we're going to see a Dazzle. Um... Earlier in the chat, they had joked about picking a Huskar, so <laughs> let's see. We could we could be seeing a Huskar here with this Dazzle pick. Uh, that would be a good time, for sure. Always fun when you got a Huskar in game. And we got an Ember Spirit coming up, Berkeley. So that's another one of those mids. Jump in, lock down on Sniper. Uh, but he also is not one that picks BKB, so Silence is going to be very good against him. So already the Skywrath pick working out pretty well. And we're seeing a Slark come out from Dire, which is interesting. I, I suppose um, the Slark could work pretty well with the Dazzle, do a lot of damage, uh, go into Dark Pact, and um, Ten seconds you know, heal back up. Got that bonus armor from Dazzle, which is always huge. And definitely a necessity against any Phantom Assassin. Um, you know, Slark is pretty good against Phantom Assassin and uh, heroes like Ember Spirit or Vengeful Spirit uh, because he's able to just jump on them and lock them down really quickly. So that's good. Right now, Berkeley is going with a three agility hero lineup, so they're going to have a ton of damage coming out from this Phantom Assassin, Vengeful Spirit, Ember Spirit combo, as well as the magical damage coming out from Phoenix and um, Flame Guard. But. If I was Emerson College, I'd pick some something a little bit tanky right about now. Something with some tank and some uh, some lockdown. So maybe a Doom would be a good pick for Emerson right now. Lock down that Ember Spirit. Uh, lock down that Phantom Assassin. Just eliminate them from the fight completely. We're going to see a Magnus ban. Uh, I suppose Emerson is looking for a mid, so Magnus would be a good ban. Um, that would definitely be something that could get torn apart. A Magnus could definitely tear apart uh, this this Radiant team right about now. So, and a Witch Doctor ban. Uh, Radiant team. Pick. Yeah, I see that. That makes sense. You got that huge uh, area slow and from uh, coming out from Phoenix with her fire spirits. So, you know, a Witch Doctor could certainly do some serious damage in there. Uh, Let's see what else have we got going on here. So, Berkeley College is going to be looking for a second support as they're going to probably have that Phoenix in the off lane. Earthshaker is going to be what comes out. Another great counter to Sniper. Uh, long range stun, blink initiation. Um, yeah, this is a great pick coming out of Berkeley. Uh, no interiors. And we're going to see a Bristleback. This is interesting. So, I'm not sure. Uh, what we're gonna be seeing. It looks like Bristleback off lane, Sniper mid, and Slark safe farm is what we're gonna be rolling with here. Um, let's go over the teams. So over here on the Dire team, we have Tesseract Dota playing that Sniper mid role. Uh, we have uh, EG, Frydum, AVGL. This is uh, one of our weakest links on the team right now, Daniel Friedman, but Hopefully he'll be able to step up his Bristleback game and, uh, you know, really put out for this team. Uh, we got Tiny Hippo over here, rocking that Ember, uh, excuse me, Skywrath Mage with the Arcane Bolt leveled up, number one. Dread, Dreadgon on, uh, your, your, uh, Dazzle over here with Kara 4 on the Slark. Shout out to Havost 4. Let's see, on the Radiant team, we got Last Ticket on that Vengeful Spirit. We got Gunnish on Gunshy on that uh, Phantom Assassin and Pooh Ball 420 on the, uh, on the Air Shaker. And it looks like we're going to get an early pause out here. Tactical pause? I think so. Um, for rune positioning right now, we're looking at Tesseract QI. It's, uh, Probably not going to contest top lane as a solo Ember Spirit. If he get, levels up the Icarus Dive, he could potentially jump in, but he could get leashed mid-jump, and that would not be fun for him. Um, and down here, we have... Looks like... Yeah, looks like we're just going to do a rune swap. So bottom lane, 
We're gonna have Berkeley picking up that rune and top lane. We're gonna have oh, the Icarus dive in, do some damage, and get out. So both teams picking up their bounty runes and getting going. Looks like we're gonna have. Let's see what the wording is up here. Nice. This I like this word a lot from uh, the Dire team. It you know often doesn't get dewarded. It's good for spotting ganks for mid through up up through here and everything like that. And uh, you know it's a great word. Not seeing any wards come out from Radiant. Let's see how the mid lane's going right now. Victor choosing to level up that Flame Guard level 1. And Tesseract Dota is going for the headshot. Uh, don't blame him. That's a great one to have. Let's see some game stats up here. Last hit starts nice. So, um. This lane, I'm expecting the sniper to come out on top. However, he's going to have a lot more trouble come mid game. Down bottom, Freedom, AVGL, is going to be facing a lot of damage from these guys down here. So uh, that's something to look at. And up top we got Kara and Tesseract QI. Um, you know, I'm not sure they're gonna be able to really kill this Phoenix. He's got the Icarus dive. He's got everything he really needs to survive up there. So he should be okay for now. Um, you know, nothing's gonna really stop them. See how they're last hitting. Get some pulling camps going. Looks like. QI is here and ready to contest any of that pulling, so it might not be happening. And we're going to get a pause. Tactical? I think so. Uh, it looks like they missed the pull down here, so... Um, Bristleback is getting some CS. He's getting some XP, that's for certain. He's got level 2 over here, as opposed to level 2 over here on the Phoenix, so about even. Mid lane, we're looking at a... Uh, Level 2 Sniper with 4 last hits, 4 denies, and 2 last hits on that Ember. So, like I expected, you know, Sniper's gonna win any lane when it comes to melee versus uh, range. You know, he's just so good at, you know, picking down heroes and really just doing a ton of damage that way. So, no surprise there. Sniper's taking that away. Uh, down bottom, looks like we got an, a Ring of Aquila coming up real soon for this Phantom Assassin. Wow. Uh, and well, this Bristleback continues the last hit. Not going to be really many opportunities for killing him. Uh, he's just going to push out lanes, get rooms, and that's going to be that. Oh, that's a nice ward. They both have that warded though, so I'm sure that the Radiant team's seen that warding. And they know that he has that Invis rune, so they know he's there. This is a little bit dangerous. If um, they have any detection, they don't. Um, so I'm unlikely that anyone's going to get killed down there. Up top, we got some. Not many last hits coming out of Kara right now. He's only got four as opposed to the Phantom Assassin's eight. So, not sure what's going on. Uh, if the pulling hasn't. Well, they're pulling now. Uh, Missing bottom. Should have probably pulled through already if they wanted to get that double pull, but it didn't really work out. Um, mid lane, Tesseract just, you know, sniping down this Ember Spirit over here. Just, just touching him every every now and then. Give him that little, little dip dap. Whippity whap, and it's gonna be very, very hard for this Ember Spirit to get any sort of last hits, in, and uh, that's definitely gonna be a problem for him. Um, we're seeing 14 last hits coming out of this sniper, so he's definitely gonna have to be the one that's gonna uh, counteract this uh, Phantom Assassin, who right now is getting some pretty good free farm. Not much Bristleback can do down here, uh, except soak up some XP, get some denies, and not die. So. Bristleback actually is at nine last hits. That's pretty huge. He's got s plenty of regen left as well. He's got a full salve and a tango, so he's looking pretty good. Might be going for it. Got the boots, and I missed first blood. They got first blood on that sniper, and yeah, they're gonna get the re they're gonna get the salve on that Bristleback. So nothing's gonna come out of that. My bad, guys. I'm sorry. I already missed the first first blood. Off to a great start. I'll get the next one. Up top, maybe? Not much going on. This... It's gonna be really hard to kill this Ember Spirit. Or this, uh, Phoenix. The only way it's gonna happen is... Oh, that's actually quite a bit of damage right there. If we can get another one of those and, uh... Maybe not. Uh, yeah, the only way that's really gonna happen is... I think they're definitely gonna need a level Ancient Seal for that. Um, otherwise, he's not gonna go anywhere. Bounty down top, bottom, and DD up top. So, we could be looking at a gank setup for top lane, but... That Phoenix is a little bit too low right now to make anything happen. If they, I feel like he should go on her right now. That would be a very, that would be a kill if they, if they went. We got some harass going on down there and not much else. Uh, 
Looks like Bristleback in a bit of a spot, but you know, he's just gonna walk out of there. Not much, not much to worry about. Yeah, up top they're definitely missing some kill potential. If they have a silence right now, that's a kill. Oh, that's a kill. This should be a kill right here. No. Wow. And that Slark is gonna die to the off lane. That is not good. That is really not good. And oh man, they gotta be careful, bot. He's gonna is he gonna get a kill? This Oh boy. Oh he gets one before he goes out. That's how it's done. That bristleback is just so strong. He's gonna get the he's gonna get the kill before he goes down, so that's gonna be worth it for him. Um off lane is definitely always great to get any kills, so wow, we got Phoenix um you know, already with one kill. She's got her boots of tranquility up and she's got her spirits up and she's just gonna harass all day long. There's not much they can do about this. They really just need to get some kills on her and you know, beat her down. So we're still looking at a walking courier on both teams. Interesting strategy. Not sure what's going on there. Um, we got an Aquila and boots of speed up on the sniper and what do we got on this? Just a bottle and stout shield and boots. So this Ember Spirit really is not having a great time right now. Not much he can do. Um, looks like they're gonna try and gank mid again. And they've got the stun into stun into... That's an easy kill. They're gonna get that every time unless they can be calling out the ganks. So down bottom, they really need to do a better job of that. I think they need to maybe set up a ward over here or something because these guys just, oh, well, I think they smoked in, so, you know, not much they can do, but Bristleback should really be calling missing more often, and this, this sniper needs to watch himself. He's definitely going to be in a tricky spot, and they're going to see rotation up to top now. Um, Venge is very low, she's going back to base, but we do have Pooh Ball up here, as well as the Ember Spirit in mid. So, oh, if they can get this Dazzle, that's an easy pickoff. Easy pickoff right here. Let's see if they go for it. No. They're gonna choose not to with that whole creep wave right there. Oh my goodness. They definitely know what's going on right here. They definitely see what's happening. We're gonna see a stun coming out from Ember Spirit. Icarus Dive coming through. The last Shallow Grave is gonna keep the color alive for the time being. Sniper TP's in. Is he gonna take down the Earth Shaker? Looks like it. And right now, Car is chasing down that uh, Phoenix, yep, they got a snipe assassinate kill, and he's going into, oh, that was close, 12 HP on the Dazzle right here, huge turnaround for, uh, Emerson College, they were definitely feeling the brunt of, um, of force from, uh, Berkeley, and that was a huge turnaround for them, they're gonna get experience, uh, kill, and an assist on their, um, much needed kill and assist on there. Slark, who just now is buying boots. Oh, we got a TP in from the Ember Spirit, choosing to come back up top. He's getting dark packed out of that. Is he leaping? Yes, leap to dodge the. Okay, leaps to dodge the uh, Ember Spirit. What's that thing called? Fire Remnant. But he's still gonna take some damage from that. Uh, is he level six yet? No, he's so close. He's gonna have to walk back to base and heal that one up though. Down bottom. Uh, got a ring of regen and the stout shield, so it looks like we're gonna go for an early vanguard, possibly uh, crimson guard coming out from this um, bristleback down bottom. He's almost out of mana, so unlikely that he'll get another kill, but he can stay in lane for a time being and certainly leave some XP. He's really close to that vanguard, so he's gonna start getting really tanky re really quickly, and he definitely is gonna need to build a lot of um, a lot of uh, tank for this game, as we're seeing this. Phantom Assassin basically uncontested, going straight for the um, Morbid Mask and Dyer's already at 48 tower. last hits. Attack. Eight minutes in, that's very solid. Um, we're seeing a similar amount from Tesseract in mid. He's got 40 last hits and 11 denies, so he's definitely shutting down this Ember Spirit with only 18 last hits on him. Um, and we're going to see the rotation top for... Uh, Oh, you gotta dive mid, and looks like Tesseract is going down once again. There's a problem with Sniper, folks. Three deaths in nine minutes is really not ideal, and there's not much you can do about that. Oh, we're gonna looking for a kill down here, going into Dark Pact, and oh, that's a very clutch ultimate. He's gotta get two of them. That was huge. Wow. Phoenix just showing off the power of that ultimate right there. And uh, Emerson College in a bit of a tricky spot. 
they don't really have the late game advantage over um over Berkeley right now, and they're gonna see a gank. It looks like we can see, yep, oh, that's an early grave. Not sure how I feel about that one, but that's a kill. Nice, much needed kill for uh, Sniper on the Phantom Assassin, and we're gonna see another one. Yes, looks like we, oh, maybe not. Oh, he doesn't have enough mana. Can we get another Assassinate, or? No. With that Ember, with that uh, Earth Shaker coming in, it's just gonna be a little bit scary, but can we see something from Kara? Big leap. I think I think this could happen. No, they're too far away. Oh, this Earth Shaker. Oh, could could have had him with the leap, I think. But they're gonna change this into a uh, transition to a push now. Emerson College gonna take down this T1 bot. Um, you know, some much needed XP and gold for them. So right now, though, while we talk, Gunshy up top pushing in that lane, and we only have a Skyrath Mage who is extremely susceptible Radiant's to their death so maybe we can see a TP reaction to defend this tower for uh, Emerson College but Radiance got their siege unit and they've got their creep wave so it's not looking great and Hippo getting a little bit too close and he's just gonna get destroyed that's what happens when uh, you're a little bit too soft as a uh, Skywrath mage to just hop in these fights and um we're gonna see, it looks like Emerson's just gonna give up the top tower. Don't really have any uh, hope for defending that one. But they could try to transition this into something mid. They've got a few few heroes mid. Um, doesn't look like it. And Embers and Bristleback is just gonna keep on farming up. He's got his Vanguard, he's got his Sal, and he's got 800 gold. So hopefully he'll go for some Tranko, some uh, boots next. I'd like to see some power treads on him. Um, and looks like Kara is not gonna go down. He's got, he's got Shadow Pack, so he'll be okay. Shadow Dance, and he's got the Grave, but I don't agree with that Grave. That wasn't a very good Grave timing, and it looks like he's gonna pay for it. Yeah, he's gonna go down. And Kara, don't go back in, buddy. It's not worth it. Do we have another Icarus dive? No, we don't. Not anytime soon. But we're getting the rotation. This sniper is a little bit low, so not sure how. Hell, this one's looking for them, but they're gonna get the snipe, and that's a very good assassinate. There we go. With that, with that uh, silence, you're gonna hit a huge damage uh, increase from that. Radiance and I guess I missed uh, Earthshaker going down somewhere. Not sure what happened with that. Uh, let's see if we can pull that up. Yep, it looks like. Um, oh, I guess sniper got him. Hmm. Not sure when that happened. All right. Probably mid. And we're going to see him come back down bottom, uh, just get some experience, you know, hopefully get to those uh, mana boots before too long. We're going to, Daniel's got to watch out down here. He got a few stuns, he got all the stuns actually, and oh, they're going to smoke. This is interesting. So they're going to smoke and go to mid. They don't know where the ember, where the bristleback is, but this sniper really needs to play safe. Yep, he is, Oh, and an auto attack on the tower is going to reveal the position, but, you know, he's still going to go down. With all this initiation, this long range stunned, there's nothing that Sniper can do, he's just got to really play much, much safer, and I think they're definitely going to have to look for uh, some support from, you know, maybe, uh, oh shoot, we're going to see an Echo Slam coming out here and take down the Bristleback, so he's going to go down. Um... Yeah, looks like they're gonna transition into this new mid push. Yeah, they got all five heroes mid, and uh, Sniper and Bristleback are both down. So there's not much that uh, Emerson's gonna be really able to do to stop this. So Dyer's middle tower is yeah, under looks like that's what's gonna happen. Um, we're looking at 71 last hits coming out from this Phantom Assassin, which is huge. Uh, yeah, she's just gonna snowball really quickly. She's gonna jump on this. Uh, Keep on jumping on the sniper. Oh, sniper's back up though, so we're gonna see if Strat Mill keeping everyone down. However, uh, Phoenix was able to get a quick mech with that, uh, with those kills up top and all that experience and farm. So, six kills on the Phoenix. Wow, I didn't even realize the extent of it, but that's huge. And now they're all going top. So, uh, Skyrath Mage, you better back out real quick, dude, because you're not looking like. Yeah, looks like we're gonna see a death coming out of this. Yep, Skyrath gonna try to 
throw out his seal, but to no avail. He's gonna go down. And Kari's just gonna run out of there. Scurry away. I think that the supports really need to start stacking some camps, some ancients, you know. Anything to get the sniper back in the game. He's got his Mask of Madness now. And he's just gonna try to push some towers and hopefully, you know, stay back a bit. I think the next thing that the sniper needs might be a Shadow Blade. Um, you know... Anything to make him a little bit more survivable, uh, and maybe some more ward vision. We're seeing absolutely zero ward vision on the map right now, from either side, so definitely going to be needing some of that. That's a risky leap coming in from Kara, as he barely missed that Phantom Assassin going up the hill. Uh, Could have been bad news bears for him, as this Phantom Assassin is really farmed right now. She's already got her Ogre Club, she's going to go straight into a BKB, if I were to guess. Um, you know, potentially a Sanji Yasha, but I really think this is a BKB game for her. She's got a lot of, a lot, a lot of magic damage. This sniper with the headshots, if you can stop the headshot damage, then you're going to be good to go. Especially with that evasion. And I don't think sniper is anywhere near getting a, a Monkey King bar, anything like that, before too long. And he's going to be probably the only person on the team for a long time is going to be anywhere near that. In fact, actually, this Bristleback does have uh, 60 last hits, so he's coming in second on the Dire team, which is pretty huge. Uh, you know, definitely a lot of last hits, and we got some wards up finally, and these are clearly some precautionary wards for the ganks. Uh, however, this is not going to do much, this sentry ward. It's not going to help them out much, seeing as smoke does not get revealed by sentries, so... This Bristleback's going to spot out four heroes mid, and, you know, that's going to help them from not going in too hard. But while they while will they speak, uh, Phantom Assassin just destroys bottom tower, and she's going to TP mid, and they can definitely take a fight here. So this is not looking too good. Definitely, ooh, yeah, that was bold coming out of Tesseract. But he's going to get the Shallow Grave. He's going to get the ultimate, and we see uh, Ember Spirit thing. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm bad at this shit. But, wow. Emerson College just gets destroyed in that fight. The only one left standing is this Bristleback. Not sure if he's... now. he's gonna go down. Yep. That's a full-on team wipe with the mech. They got that tower. They're gonna get one more. This is not looking good for Emerson College right now. I don't see much comeback potential for them either. Uh, you know, you got your Slark and your Sniper, who are definitely some mid to early game dominators, but late game, they're going to have to bow to this uh, Ember Spirit and this this Fam Assassin, especially with that plus damage buff. However, uh, we actually are seeing all of Emerson College is uh, respawns now due to their low respawn times. We're only 17 minutes in, so they could potentially stage a defense. Uh, they definitely have, they have the Glyph. And they're just waiting on the Bristleback now, who is pretty clutch. He's the only one who did any damage that fight. They got a preemptive, uh... Oh, we got a leash. And, no, he's just gonna leap away. We got a Sniper Assassinate coming out, but... Not gonna be able to take down this Phoenix just yet. He's got a lot of regen. That's it. Oh, he's gonna go down! I mark my words. He did go down. He got, unfortunately, blocked out by the his own Earthshaker's uh, fissure, so you hate to see that. Definitely not, not good news for them, but they could try to transition this into a push. Uh, I think they just need to, you know, get some time on to farm, though. They definitely need to farm, and then they need to start taking some fights. Um, the sooner they can take some fights with with uh, good farm and good items and, you know, get some pickoffs. The sooner they're going to be able to come back into this game. Looks like we're looking for a Shadow Blade from Kara, and not sure what Sniper's going for. He looks like he's going to go for, uh, maybe... Oh, wow, Sniper is doing a pretty good amount of damage already to this Ember Spirit. Um, he's pretty... This Ember Spirit looks like he's going for, yeah, he's going to go for a Battle Fury. Classic Ember Spirit item. Very, very powerful on him. Uh, and we def well, we already have the full-on Crimson Guard from Bristleback, so that's pretty big. And it looks like he's going to go for some treads now. Um, we got wards spotting out, uh, last ticket over here. Oh, or maybe they're spotting out the wards over there, not sure. But, uh, looking at top lane pushing in, nothing that this team can't handle, though. Got, looks like Dazzle's trying to build a mech right now. Um, 
And he's not too far away. Only 600 gold away. And that's going to be pretty big for them. If they can get that before the 25 minute mark, that's going to be good. They definitely need that healing coming out. And they definitely need some way to protect their sniper a little bit more. One thing that they're doing now is they're throwing out Shadow Graves really, really early on, on this uh, on this sniper. And while he is squishy, uh, he's he definitely... The Shadow Grave timing is going to be really, really clutch in keeping him alive. So... Then again, they do have a very short range on that, so it's going to be hard for them to, to make that work out. And wow, I stand corrected. There was actually, this is a, a Radiant Ward, a very aggressive ward, and that's going to spot out a ton, a ton, a ton of Emerson College's action. That's pretty huge. Um, however, Bristleback's going to be able to take this Ancient stack, and that's going to be good for him. Come back into the game a bit. He's just going to sit there and AFK farm it, so that works out well for them. Looks like they might be going for a kill on this sniper here. You think you're safe, sniper, but not yet. Oh, let's see what we got going on. He's gonna do some jukes of hazard in the trees here. Is he gonna go for fighting it? Oh, he dodges the stun. I think he just runs away. Just get out of there, sniper. Ooh, that light ray though. Oh, he's gonna get blocked by his own creeps. Didn't have the. Uh... Oh wow. And Slark is gonna try and go in as well. He's just gonna get shut down. So. Did not work out well for uh, Emerson College there. Slark really should have seen that that wasn't a good fight to go into and disengaged right there. It looks like Sniper is going for Sanjin and Yasha, possibly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's what it looks like. He's got the rest. Uh, he looks like he just bought out before he died. But he's not really completing enemies. Yet. He's just buying stuff and uh, you know trying to tank up a bit, get those stats up. Definitely want to finish that Yasha before getting that Ogre Club, I think, though. I mean, it's going to make him a little bit more tanky, but in the end, not enough. Uh, going to see a stun coming out. Not going to be able to block Tiny Hippo on the wrong side of that, but he's going to get... Wow, he just goes down so quickly, even with that silence on the Phoenix. We're going to see also Dazzle going down. The only one left standing is this Bristleback right now, who is doing quite a bit of damage. Can they get the kill off? Yes, Phoenix goes down. Sniper, he's picking away. He's going to get uh, Earthshaker, and he's going to uh, he's gonna get the Venge now, too, so... That turned out pretty well for uh, Emerson College in the end. Although, they did end up losing a tower by the bottom. So, you know, an okay trade. Not great, but kills for Sniper is good. Uh, definitely something that they need. So, that's a big comeback potential right there. Got a DD rune here, and this Phantom Assassin is looking pretty big. She's already got her helm and her BKB, so it's going to be very hard to take down this lady. That's for sure car over here working on his oh does he have a complete yeah he does so that's gonna be pretty big this way he can initiate more uh you know escape more and just generally be a bit more survivable he can activate that during some fights get some hp back um you know surprise the enemy team all that fun stuff and we got the chain mail coming out so it looks like we're gonna go for uh yep we're gonna see a blade mail coming out from this bristle back that's probably pretty good. Uh, if if that Phantom Assassin jumps on him without the BKB activated and gets a few good swings in and crits on one of those, that's going to be some big return damage. So definitely a, a strong item to pick up and give him a lot more survivability, but not sure that he really needs that. Sniper picked up that Sanjin Yasha, so he's going to get some more stats. That's great. And he's going to get that slow, um, which is also going to be very helpful. But now that the Phantom Assassin's got that... BKB, they're really not going to be able to do too much here. And Kara is going to go down. Does not activate his uh, his Dark Pack for some reason. And yeah, if he had done that, he could have gotten out of that stun. So A little bit of a miscook there, perhaps. He definitely had enough mana for it, so I'm not sure what was going on there. It's only a 40 mana cost spell. Um, going to lay down some aggressive wards here by the Radiant team. And maybe transition this into a top push. Uh, they've got Four heroes here, and their Phantom Assassin is just going to be content to split push mid. We got, I don't know, I think that, you know, this this Bristleback, he's definitely doing a lot of damage, and there's no creeps for this guy to leap to, so, unfortunately though, yeah, with the TP in, he's going to be fine. Does he activate his chain mail? Not yet. He's going to save that. And he could just go back in. Oh, interesting chain mail activation. If he had gotten that up a bit earlier, I think that... We could have uh, definitely seen a kill, but not sure if it's going to work out now. Yeah, just got to run away. Just run away. We're going to see a death out on... Yep, yeah, going to both go down here. 
bit of a misplay. Uh, they all had TPs in. They were there for a long time, fighting right next to that T1 tower like that. You're just asking to get TP'd on and team wiped. So now we're going to see a strong five-man push down mid. Uh, this could be... They could go for Rax here. They definitely have that potential. Um, taking down this T2 tower is going to be really easy. And then it's just a matter of if they can fight through the shrap mill and tank up. I think they have it, though. They're not too many uh, squishy heroes. They have the mech. They've got everything they need. they got the light strike. they got the... Uh, Healing Ray of whatever it's called, Sunray. Really creative name. They could definitely go for this T2 tower push, but we're gonna see Emerson College almost all respawn by this point. Um, they're gonna smoke up, and Gunshot is gonna TP away. Uh, not sure if that is communication or what's going on there, but not gonna see a fight happening, and we're just gonna. We're just gonna push out that lane, and yeah, it looks like he had to push out bottom, so that makes sense, I guess. Get some more farm. And he got a basher, so soon he's gonna get that abyssal. He's just gonna jump on that sniper, bash him once, lock him down, completely demolish him. And they're still gonna get, uh, they're gonna get denied in that tower, so we'll play by sniper. Um, yeah. But yeah, this, this sniper is not, not looking too confident right now. Uh, Gunshot is just going to be able to hop in there, destroy him, especially if the sniper's got his Mask of Madness on. I bet he could almost one-hit him. He got almost 300 damage coming out, or 200 damage coming out, and that's with 450% and a crit, like, and a bash on top of that. Jeez, you're looking at a ton, a ton of damage coming out in Sniper, so... Looks like they're gonna go for the Roche. It's gonna be spotted up by this Dia Ward, but really there's not much they can do about this. Um, they've got the Venge, uh, minus, minus armor, and they've got Phantom Assassin just tanking it up and healing right back up, and critting for 700, almost 800. Yeah, this is a really quick Roche. I'm not sure they even want to give this to Gunshy. He's pretty tanky right now, but... Alright, yeah, I'll give it to Gunshy. Um, it's probably a good play. Although, I feel like this Ember Spirit could use the comeback. He's already got his boots to travel, so that's pretty big. Um, and he's got his... And he's got his, uh... His Battle Fury, so that's pretty huge. Um... Alright, not sure what that was. Anyway, sorry about that. So... Let's see, what do we got going on here? Tiny Hippo on Skyrath Mage. He's really not doing too great on items right now. Might be going for a Force Staff. Could be really helpful for this Sniper. Um, get him out of some dangerous situations. We got the Mech complete on Dazzle, so that's pretty big. Um, gonna help them tank up a bit more and survive through the fights. Um, the only person on this team right now that has any farm is, is this... Uh, This is Bristleback, however, so let's see if we can get these figured out. There we go. Yeah, so right now we're seeing topping the charts, uh, Phantom Assassin, and Ember Spirit was able to make a pretty quick comeback once he got his Battle Fury online. Farm up camps, get some good CS and stuff like that. Um, and they've been really limiting Emerson College to their side of the map, keeping them locked down and making it impossible for them to do much. And, you know, they able to just take these fights pretty much 4v5, uh, even without their their Phantom Assassin. He's just content to go out and farm and do his thing, so this is pretty big. Phantom Assassin is getting a lot of farm, and, you know, Emerson College out here is not, not getting much. They're definitely going to want to push with this Aegis, though. Got a Blink Dagger out on Ball, so he's going to be doing some big things. And we got to jump in by the PA. He's going to pop his BKB. Everybody is getting melted by a sunray right now. Big, big salt coming through. Just, uh, yeah, that's a team wipe. All five. Got a buyback on Sniper and a buyback on Slark. But this tower is going down. This Rax is going down. This is looking like it might be game over, folks. Gunshot is pretty low, but he does have that Aegis. He's going to get popped. And Kara is going to have a dieback. Uh, he's got 60, 70 seconds on respawn, and Tesseract Dota's already taken a lot of damage over here. So, it's not looking good for this Emerson team right now. 
These young bloods not faring too well. 22 seconds until you got your bristle back up, back up. The only tank on this team. And uh, right now, Tesseract, he's playing with fire. He can get hopped on any second now and just get blown up. Yep, and Tiny Hippo, he's just going to get blown up. Not much you can do there. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep, you gotta get two racks. And you still got 27 seconds on both the Slark and that, uh, and that Skyrath. So they could look to continue pushing, but looks like they're just gonna farm up uh, and get ready to push another lane. So I'm not seeing much comeback potential right now for Emerson College. Um, this sniper's got. What has he got? He's got. He's looking for a BKB now. So, you know, once he gets that, that could potentially be something big. But. Alright, they could look for a kill on this uh, Earthshaker too. Yeah, he's gonna go down. Might have wanted to give that one to the Sniper. Let him get his BKB up sooner. Once they get BKBs up, they're gonna uh, be blocking a lot of damage from this Phoenix who's just doing work this game. He's already got a Shiva's Guard. He's just hopping in there, doing some damage, and getting out. And, you know, there's not much they can do. He's, he's a huge tank right now. He's got a lot of regen. And we got a Crystalis. Wow. Alright. Dagon Gaming coming out from Phoenix right now. Some real nice plays. <sighs> was that Phoenix? Did I speak? Did I speak too soon? No, I think that was Phoenix. I think he just bought a Dagon. Did he sell it? I don't know. I don't know, dude. Radiance top tower is Definitely wasn't this team. Buying a... So we got Boots of Travel and Crystallis right now. Dyer's bottom tower this uh, this Ember Spirit's been given some room to come back. He's already level 18. Is he out-leveling the... No, uh, he's, he's almost out-leveling the Phantom Assassin. And he's just, you know, crushing it right now. With more farm, he's just gonna hop in there, do quarter of Sniper's health in one hit. Uh, Sniper is definitely tanking up. I think after this BKB, he might want to go for... Uh, a Scotty or something along those lines, but he might just need the damage. Um, I mean, he he's definitely gonna get blown up really quickly. Uh, we'll see how he how he lasts with with his uh, Black King bar up, but um, but yeah, with that BKB, he could he could last a little bit longer even through the Sunray. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure how it's gonna work out for him. And we already got a demon edge. Oh my! Oh my God! And he's got he's got the full he's got the full shebang. He's got the whole kick kang boodle. He's all ready to go. However, he's got a Sanj coming up from this uh, bristleback, and he's just gonna blow up. No! Wow! All right. With that yule scepter, he's got the speed, and he's got the stun. So you know we could be looking at a turned around fight really quickly. However, they are able to get down the Venture Spirit. A huge, huge Skyrack is going to take down that uh, Ember Spirit really quickly. However, doing a ton of damage is this Phoenix. Just blowing everyone up. They can't focus him. He's going to stun them up. Looks like Gunshy. Yep, he's going to take down that Bristleback. But Sniper has just been able to pick people off this fight. He needs to get away now. He needs to run away. He's not going to be able to fight up against this Phantom Assassin in this Phoenix combo. They're just too strong. Car, you need to get out of there, dude. He get out. He leap dodges the the dagger, and he's gonna he's gonna survive for now. But jeez, jeez, Louise, we're gonna see two supports and uh, a mid and off lane go down from either team. Interesting buyback. Not sure if I agree with that. Uh, I guess he's just trying to make sure that they don't push in the top lane. But you know, with sniper, they're gonna be able to lock them down pretty quickly. And do we have a uh, boots of travel on this? Yeah, we got a boot to travel on this fan assassin, and he's got his abyssal, and he's got 19, and he's just he's just so huge. They can't they can't kill this guy. He's unstoppable. What's he going for next? Uh, I'd really like to see. I think he just goes for more damage. Honestly, he doesn't need he doesn't need any more survivability. Yep, we're gonna see the Dagons start to come out. Level two Dagon on the courier for this Phoenix right now. Um. Probably get get rid of his wand or his urn. Pick that up. Just leap in, blow up the sniper before he even gets a chance to put on his BKB. 
So, yep, yeah, it's just an illusion. And there's the real one. Let's see if he tests it out. I think he should just hop in there. When Cypress got his, his Mask Madness activated, he's already taken 20% more damage. He could just hop in there and blow him up with this Dagon, Shiva's, uh, and Fire Spirit's combo. He's just going to do so much damage so quickly. Ember Spirit. He's got his Daedalus. He's now going for a Morbid Mask. I don't... I don't agree with this. I'd, I'd like to see, uh, you know, maybe another, uh, maybe another, uh, blip, Battle Fury. Looks like he might go down now. They did lose. Does he have a Fire Remnant? Yeah, he's gonna be fine. Oh, yeah, no, he, he'll be fine. He'll just hop right out of there. And Gunshot's gonna hop in and just blow up Dazzle. And, you know, just eliminate everyone from this fight. They need to get out. They need to get out quickly. You can see uh, Bristol pops this Ember uh, Bristol back, and he's used his buyback, and he's dead. So he's not going to be coming back anytime soon. Kara, you just got to get out of there, dude. You can't, you can't withstand this force. And he's going to go down. Is he going to go down? No, he's got a Shadow Blade. But looks like this T2 could, or T3 could definitely be going down. Only Slurp and wow, wow, that damage. Sniper is able to get a return kill, but swapped in. Locked down, shut down, and dig on. He's gonna go down. <clears throat> Not much he can do about that. We're seeing a swap really come into play right there. Got a buyback from Sniper, and ooh, a whipped SS ultimate, or uh, Skyrath Mage ultimate. Sniper is gonna be able to pick him off though, and he's just gonna hopefully be picking people off all game. Godlike streak from this fan assassin. Sniper is gonna die back, he's dead. You only got a buy back on this guy, mate. 104 seconds on the sniper, and it looks like GG has been called. And that, folks, is game. That is game. I don't know how to end the game. Uh, there it goes. All right. Alright folks, I'm going to go into some post-game game analysis on this one. Alright, so, wow, that's a pretty exciting game, huh? We're going to see uh, Berkeley College is going to be moving forward in this bracket, and um, they're going to take out, off Emerson College, so I'm not sure how to change this, but Berkeley is going to be moving forward. Really, that game came down to the counter picks from Berkeley. Um, you know, they just got Phantom Assassin, Earthshaker, Venge, Phoenix, and... Ember Spirit, all able to just jump in on that sniper and lock him down so quickly. They ganked him early game and they just kept him shut down, and that was really the key to their victory right there. Um, you know, off lane, their their bristleback was able to get quite a bit of farm and you know tank up pretty well. But a bristleback is one thing; you definitely need the rest of the team with you though on that one. So unfortunate to see that. Uh, you know, Slark got a really rough time in lane, dying first blood to that Phoenix. Uh, that was not good for him. Eight deaths on, on that Slark, and he was really just not able to recover from that game. It looks like he was going to try to go for a Divine Rapier or something out of the blue like that, but basically, you know, Berkeley was able to push out the lanes and just, like, go four and five all game long against uh, EC, while Phantom Assassin farmed all game and was able to just, you know, completely dominate, um, blow people up. Uh... Yeah, so good game from both teams. Uh, hopefully, moving forward, we'll we'll see about some, you know, some better strategical picks. And hopefully, uh, you know, sniper first pick is always risky because he is a really easy hero to counter if you do it right. And if you know what you're doing, easy, easy hero to counter. So sniper is just locked down and destroyed by Phantom Assassin Phoenix. You know, heroes like that. So uh, Daniel, please, no, no, right now. All right, well, we got a post-game interview from uh, Bristleback, aka <laughs> AVGL, uh, Freedium, uh, Daniel uh -huh. Freeman. How's it going, dude? Dude, I'm all right. How are you? Uh, me and Daniel, good friends, IRL, if you know what I mean. Um, so, Daniel, that game, what went wrong for you guys? Um, I guess what... Hold on a sec. Uh, no, all right. No, never mind. Um, I guess what went wrong? Why the fuck are we doing this? Uh, dude, why not? <laughs> 
The people are watching. We've got nine nine people watching the stream. Oh, snap. Okay. Uh, what went wrong is that we gave the Phoenix way too much space on top lane. Yeah, Phoenix um, kind of kind of snowballed real quick like that. Yeah. Fireballed, you might say. But um. All right, great. Thanks for the post game interview, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna cut to some music and uh, get back out there. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back shortly with some more action here at AVGL. Uh, looking for that Northeastern versus Boston University matchup. BU is a big powerhouse in this in this tournament, so that should be a fun game. Northeastern also pretty strong. We're gonna see Emerson descend into the losers bracket with uh, the loser of the Northeastern Boston University game, and uh, Berkeley College is gonna move on to play the winner of that game. So a lot more action today in the in the mix up. Uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks. Have a good one.